I have something to admit, though. I am a serial entrepreneur. I start a lot of companies. It's been uh, about a week and a day since I started the last one. <laughs> I think I need help. My wife thinks I need help. Um, and maybe hoping that after talking here, it would be like therapy. You know, It'll help me a little bit and maybe I'll get more balance. But um, I would like to say that, uh, but it wasn't always like this, and a lot of these kind of uh, these confessions kind of start with that as well. But um, at, at one point in time, um, I wasn't an entrepreneur. Uh, my family's been in this country for a long time, 300 years, and uh, most of them were entrepreneurs. But my father wasn't. So where did you get the mentoring? Where did, where did you get the spirit? How did that it, it come up? And what I found is that uh, with most entrepreneurs, it's usually you're either nurtured to be one or something happens or something that gets you, whether it's a calling of the soul or it's a, uh, a need or some kind of happenstance will grab you. And for me, it, it, was, it was actually a need. I was 16 years old. My parents moved me to North Carolina. I had the wrong kind of visa. I couldn't work. So I contributed to the teenage underground economy and started my first business, which was a landscaping business. I had an old truck. And a neighbor lent me and a lawnmower, and I just went out and made some money. And it wasn't for really ideal reasons. It was because I wanted a car and I wanted a girlfriend. And this, you know, that's expensive, right? So it didn't start out, you know, like that. But I was able to to tap it. It, it led to a car de detailing business. It, uh, and then I had a painting company for two and a half days. Again, for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> the. Uh, it was a girl, and I'll just leave it at that. Her name was Jennifer. She likely forgets me, but um, it was okay. Um, but anyway, uh, after that, went to university, and I found that I started getting into finance. It was something that I seemed to be good at. It was in the systems, finance, methodologies, development, like that. And I started working for some large corporations. And I had a, 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 a passion or a, maybe a talent for uh, coming up with these off-the-wall solutions. So I used to get dropped into places with a little team and kind of sounds like a Navy SEAL thing where you kind of sneak in and do it. But we actually went in and we would, we would kind of collaborate and work with the operations and find sort of innovative ways of, of uh, turning things around. And uh, what I found though is I was being an entrepreneur within a company. The spirit was still, it was, it was stewing in there. It was bubbling. It wanted to come to the surface. And after a long time, almost 20 years in the corporate world, um, I was in a, a point where I was starting to feel a little disillusioned with the, uh, or disillusioned, is that the right word? Or uh, at least uh, um, I wasn't very happy with the, uh, 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 the type of values and the type of things that were driving all of my activities. And uh, my wife at one point came around and said, well, listen, my wife's an artist, so she has these very simple ways of just cutting to the chase and said, well, then don't do it. You know, just, <laughs> okay, and just start your own business. You've been talking about it forever. Why don't you just try? Okay, so I said, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, let's do that. And uh, so there I went. I, I said, I just jumped off. I said, goodbye, corporate world. Have a nice time. And I went uh, right into um, starting an accounting company called, uh, it's a fr it was a franchise called Paget New Market. Paget's a, a nice company that offers an, an awesome uh, small business accounting uh, system and support. And it usually marries up with an accountant. And then that's the flavor you deliver, whatever the, 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 the power of that account. And, um, and I did it, and since I was a business builder, my goal was to meet small business owners and focus on the startup, focus on the small, focus on those initial questions. Where do I get the money? And uh, how do I do this? How do I do that? So uh, that was very, it was very exciting, and I love it. I love it so much. I really wish I did this 10 years earlier. I, I, I so love what I do. Because every entrepreneur has a spirit and energy that I selfishly get to tap and, and, and use and borrow when we work together. And I get some of that satisfaction, too, when you make something work. 
right? When you see a new restaurant you help open, there's a lineup, and you see families in there working, and you get to know them. It's really something special. So um, I was very happy to do that. And then I just, ah, oh, it had to go from there. I had to do more and do more. So I've opened a few more companies. I'm not going to get into it because it's really not about me, right? Um, but what I did find is that, you know, every organization, and when you're a small business owner and you've grabbed it, it really the company, you know, bends around you and your values, okay? And at some point, the bigger the organization, the more it reflects the common values of all the stakeholders that are there. Um, the bigger and the bigger it gets, you, all of a sudden you turn into Canada and you got a parliament and all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, but even with, it doesn't matter what size the company is, um, there's an accountability in managing the company. There's an accountability. And it's accountability to the values and the needs of the stakeholders. And that's what accounting is all about, and that's why I kind of slid that in, you know. Um, but accounting is about trying to ensure accountability. And many, many businesses have different currencies, okay? Now, you, you think that, you know, small business is all about profit, 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 profit. But I'm here to tell you that I have a lot of clients that I wish were making a little more profit, but their currency isn't always about money, okay? Currency sometimes it really relates to your values. Do you have an art you want to uh, proliferate around the world? Do you have uh, a, a desire to make change? Do you have a dream that goes beyond uh, money? Is it the presence? Is it the effect of the company? And these are elements of currency which your company can make, but you need to account for it. You need to manage it like the money. You need to measure it. You need to plan what you want to deliver, assess how you did it, and do that management loop and understand whether you're effective at delivering what you really want to deliver. Because if not, you're not serving yourself. And as an entrepreneur, you're the number one stakeholder in it. Everyone will tell you something different, but no one's got a more vested interest than you. And uh, that's, uh, that will always be true. Um, yeah, there we go. So now, um, so what I find, uh, as, as far as I wanted to reflect on social enterprises, um, you know, while you're working with the community and you're going out and you're doing, you get different currencies, people doing different things, you really start to understand it's the engagement that really makes a community. But the heart of the community is small business. If we were just sitting in our bedrooms and driving down to Toronto to work and go home, or to eat and whatever. We're just sleeping in our neighborhood. Small business, you usually find them at the center of all the communities. If there's an event on, there's some kind, even a band playing in the park is a small business. People serving the hot dogs is a small business. You know, there, a lot of the times what you see going on are, are small business owners. So I started to understand that the community really, um, really sets a foundation on the engagement of people and small business has a big part to play in it. Community is the, one of the greatest things that our, our species has ever created. And it carries us, it gives us our culture. And, um, you know, finding a way to nurture that in business and maintain that sustainability uh, of, of, of growth and development in your community is key. Sustainability, I heard that word. I've heard that word a couple of times. Um, and I really wish I had your voice. You have such a great voice. <laughs> Powerful. Um, sustainability is a very important piece. And a lot of people who start the business wonder how you do that. And uh, you know, initially, let's say you started up a not-for-profit. One of the first things you do is you grab grants. Why? Low-hanging fruits right there, right? You go and you get your grants and it's great. Will that grant be there next year? Who knows? Who's Who's on, you know, uh, Parliament Hill? You never quite know if it's going to be there. The key to making sustainability is alignment. It's alignment of values. It's to ensure that you find those people who align to your values and you align to them and find a way of working together, okay? When you can exchange and collaborate, okay, aligned like that, the revenue comes. 
Okay? The value is created. Things get done. And that's what you have to do. So I don't worry about the money. Sometimes. My wife worries about the money. <laughs> I, Lucas. <laughs> My wife worries about the money. And that's, that's her job, and she keeps me, she keeps me straight. But um, what you really need to do is you focus on the values that you have. You focus on finding the organizations in your community that share those values. You reach out to them. You do business. It doesn't take any money to come over and shake a hand and say, hey, do you want to do something together? It's about engagement. So anything that enhances community engagement, I'm all for. I love it. I think it enhances our culture. I think it makes us a richer people, a richer place to live. Um, I work, uh, as Lucas mentioned, I've been involved. Uh, actually, one of the things I wanted to mention, how many people are entrepreneurs? Please put your hand up if you're an entrepreneur. There's a big portion of the crowd here. It's awesome. OK, those people with the hands up, how many of you are in your first two years? Right? Oh, the first two years. <laughs> Ooh. The pain is coming back when I say that. The first two years. The first two years are a very interesting process. It's the business that teaches you how to be a business owner in that first two years. You learn everything you don't want to know about yourself. <laughs> you learn everything you don't really know. You get an MBA in what not to do in your first two years. And it's more expensive than going to Kellogg's or something like that. It is, it's all the money that goes away doing the things you thought were going to hit a home run. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite a process. But the, one of the most important things it teaches you is what you're not. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's important. In fact, it's a barrier to most people who are trying to make their business or their initiative successful. It doesn't matter whether it's about money, 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 or whether it's about proliferation of dance, or whether it's about a cause or an unjust situation. Okay? It's important that. Um, <laughs> It's important that I get a glass of water. <laughs> Lucas! <laughs> Help! <laughs> well, thanks. Pardon me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of that. I'm okay. I'm okay. I, can, I can open a bottle. If I can't open a bottle of water, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble! Okay, thanks. That's the international sign that I'm talking too much. Um, yeah, there I'm off track. So the alignment is very important. So the, the, the whole idea is that you do need to come together um, and create those collaborations. Um, I do a lot of work. Uh, the reason I touched on the first two years is teaching you what you're not and uh, being quite aware of it. A lot of things I tell my clients is keep a mirror in your office. You must have a mirror in your office, home office, doesn't matter. If you work out of a truck, have a mirror in it. You have mirrors in it. But you can use that, right? When you need something, look in that mirror. If what you need is not in that mirror, you got to go get it. And you got to be shameless about getting it. You got to be honest. You got to have the courage to look in that mirror and say, I need it. And you go get it. And you do. And that's why I'm a little tired. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning every single morning. Another thing my wife doesn't like very much. But I get up at 4 because I can't sleep. I'm so excited. I got to get up and do something about my business, or else I'm just laying there, staring at the ceiling, going, I'm wasting money. I'm sitting here looking at the stucco. I should be doing something, right? So you definitely need to know who you are and what um, you are not, and make sure that you enable yourself, you give yourself the permission to go out and get what you need to make this happen. And you'll see these things come true, OK? Um, so in looking at community engagement, um, to me, I've looked in the mirror and I know, well, I'm not the kind of guy to go out and do this. I'm not the kind of guy to go out and do that. I'm a crazy guy that gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning and makes things happen. I'm an accountant, money guy. I can account for other things other than money. Um, but usually what I do is contribute to a lot of causes that I think are quite just. I helped start the York Region um, uh, the uh, Canadian Hard of Hearing Association, uh, which helps a lot of uh, people who are hard of hearing 
um, get access to education um, and promote certain services that allow them to integrate more in society. Um, and as Lucas mentioned, I met Lucas with uh, Shadow Pass Theatre Group, which is an awesome group. Because as I, as I mentioned, the, uh, you know, uh, it's about really the engagement that's at the base of community, okay? And the, the base, and the community gives us that culture. And what's really nice about Shadow Path is I really love the fact that they go out and really engage the community in everyday places, delivering art um, for uh, everyone from playwrights to actors and actresses. And it's a really awesome organization. Um, and they do a lot of support with, uh, with our seniors and with children. Um, with the programs that we put together, including a, a, a program that we have recently, which is um, we're bringing on some apprentice, apprentices, which are um, really women who are in the uh, theater business. Uh, there seems to be a gap there. We don't know why. Um, we just find gaps, but gaps in um, actually having women contribute and be in there, and it's more about development. There's no reason why we don't have leaders in a lot of these areas that are women. So we wonder why, what's going on? So anyway, these programs are about really mentoring and um, delivering that type of um, uh, development, and access and opportunity, which we think will have a big impact on theater in the area. So I'm very happy to be a part of that. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're the person to stand up here and have the talk. Not too many people can. I find this awfully nerve-wracking. But if you can stand up here and talk, maybe that's your role. But you don't have to be. It doesn't matter. You can still be an entrepreneur. You can still make things happen. The key is you have to do, okay? You have to do. You can think and dream and stuff like that, but you got at some point in time, you have to get off the chair. You gotta turn on, you gotta do. I don't, it could be, okay, it could be 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, it's all right. I, I pick 4, I like 4. But you still have to get up and do, okay? And I think that's really the key to making this work. And do with your heart and do with your value and the, communi and the community's values, you know, here. And make it happen. That's all I got to say. That's it. That's what I got. Thank you very much.